I'm Nick Spanos. I think we were talking yesterday on a panel. And uh, now there's today. Whoa. Whoa. That's my first computer? Yeah. You couldn't buy one. So I had to use a soldering iron. That's my first uh, modem. It's not mine, but it looked something like mine was much worse. Uh, so my whole life I, uh, I've been in technology. I've been in many businesses. And I've been in many uh, professions maybe. And uh, I've always been looking to do something exciting. I've always wanted to excite myself. So uh, one of my uses with my computer that no one else had was to sell political data. I uh, got all the voter registration files and I got them into a computer and I started printing the labels. I sold the labels because nobody had a computer. So I would sell the labels of people so they could stick them on the mailings. So domain names were like the first digital scarcity. Uh, cryptocurrency is digital scarcity. Uh, in the past, you could send a picture and uh, you send it to another friend, another friend, another friend, another friend. You got 30 pictures out there. But uh, with Bitcoin, you can't really do that. There's only one Bitcoin. And if you have one Bitcoin, you only have one Bitcoin, you keep sending it around, and it's the same one. So also, uh, domain names was the first form of digital scarcity, I believe. And I ended up with 12,000 of them. I think Dr. Marwan has uh, thousands, had thousands of them also. And we uh, have that in common also. Uh, Yeah, I've been in technology. I built a getaroom.com, no more hotels. Livery cab, there's an early Airbnb and early Uber. No one had a smartphone. Uh, Uber, the smartphone was just coming out. I mean, the livery cab. What do you do? Now I have a donkey here. So I keep telling people that if you don't grasp the new technology, of course, you're going to be left like they were left in the 1800s of people that wouldn't get off the donkey. And uh, when the train came around, so uh, this is the new technology. It looks like everyone's embracing it if they actually know what it is. So we're talking about permission technology, and I believe that permission technology doesn't really come around as fast as uh, unpermission technology. So the Wright brothers, like I said yesterday, and this on my slide too, they had a bicycle shop, and I think if someone walked by that bicycle shop in the middle of the night and heard them yelling that my machine... The machine's going to go further in the air. It's going to fly further. People might have thought they were crazy. And if they'd asked for permission from the mayor, they wouldn't have got that. So over here, you got the caveman that had the, the first wheel, but the legacy financial system did not want that wheel. You know, they want their square wheel, of course, because the other guys don't want to lose their jobs. You just look in there at the CTOs of legacy financial systems and big companies, the two with the square wheel. So innovation did come without permission. So yeah, I was in, uh, I, I wrote real estate software, then I went into the real estate business in the 80s, and um, what happened was, those big stock uh, crash, the stock market crashed, and my phone, it didn't ring for a year, and I'd, all, I'd open my own business, I had all types of properties and projects going on, and uh, there was nothing. I, uh, before I was, uh, you know, I went from, uh, my father uh, was an auto mechanic, you know, and uh, had a garage, and, uh, you know, I, I went up and uh, went into real estate, business, made a lot of money, but then the, the stock market crashed, and uh, the phone didn't ring, I lost everything, I lost properties, I had to sell them very cheap, and, uh, then I became a fi commercial fisherman. I said, gone fishing. My friend worked at City Corp, and he lost his job. We lived in a small town out in the end of uh, Long Island, which is a fishing community. And uh, so we went to work on the boats. And uh, I was watching TV, and um, I was watching television, and they had uh, Greenspan. And the reporter said, hey, if Greenspan's briefcase was a little wider... We wouldn't have had the crash. Well, they followed him around with the camera, and they said if it's wider, you know, he was going to 
he was going to uh, lower the interest rates or something, the prime lending rate. So I was like, who the hell is that guy? I didn't know what that was. I go, what do you mean? This guy here all made me a fisherman? I had a Cadillac with a cell phone with a $2,000 bill every month that didn't bother me. And this guy put me on a fishing boat. I say, he's my owner. He owns me. Sorry. So I started learning about the Federal Reserve. And I learned many things. And uh, in the past, you know, the dollar was redeemable for gold and silver. One dollar was a silver uh, ounce. And uh, one ounce of gold was a $20 gold piece. There were many currencies. Uh, ben Franklin was a printer. He was a printer of currencies. Yeah, department stores had currencies. Every bank had a currency. You could go to a bank, and you would go and redeem that bank's note for the $20, the $20 gold piece, the one ounce of gold that was pegged to the dollar. I mean, it wasn't pegged. It was redeemable. The gold was redeemable. The, the bill was a, was a redeemable uh, certificate for the gold. That all changed. On the bottom there, it says Federal Reserve Note. I don't know if you know that. We're talking about the United States there. Many countries are pegged to that. So uh, on the old bills, so silver certificate. So this is a Zimbabwe. I was talking to a gentleman uh, yesterday. Uh, I was working out of Zimbabwe. And uh, they had hyperinflation. They had a, a $100 trillion note. It was worth like 78 cents. And people had to get paid three times a day. They get it in the morning. They get it in noontime. They get it at night. So they can actually buy something with it. Because every day they were printing more and more because there was nothing scarce. Same with uh, uh, the Bolivar. Hamdan has his friend's... Uh, Condo in his pocket. It's worth less than a penny now, meaning the bills that bought the, his friend's condo. Uh, so, so I was on the boat, and I, uh, something happened to me. Uh, I was reading about the Federal Reserve, and then all of a sudden everything came together. I said, I have to go into, back into the world and do something, destroy them if I can. Or tell everybody. I was like, who am I? Who am I to tell these people? But I had no choice. I was possessed. I said, my father, my father told me, uh, uh, you'll never grow weak. You'll only grow strong while doing good. You'll never be tired. Ever. One person doing good, knowing that he's doing good, can, can, can win over 10,000 people, can, can fight 10,000, 10 million people and win when the other people have nothing to fight for. So I went into New York City, and within one day, I was involved with a, a, a presidential campaign. And within a month and a half, I became field director of a, I don't know how it happened. I just knew what I had to do. I became field director of a, 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 a presidential campaign, a Paul Songus. He didn't like the Federal Reserve. And over time, I helped many candidates. Over the years, I helped many candidates to expose the Federal Reserve. I had the only computers in politics. I would come in, I'd open up all these computers, I'd put, no one knew what the heck I was doing. And phone banking and polling and micro-targeting. And I found many candidates who were with my ethos to fight to figure out how we can uh, get a bill on the floor. We finally get a, I find a, a Ron Paul. And we get a bill on the floor, audit the Federal Reserve. Nobody uh, signed it, co-signed it, nothing. Over and over. Then we ran him for president. Then we became, he raised so much money. We did uh, 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 money bombs on the internet. And uh, people would send the money in one day. 
because the internet was here and we were all over because we had a lot of com more computers than the other people. And uh, we raised $6 million. We raised $4.3 million on November 5th. There was a movie, remember, remember the 5th of, of November, I forgot what it's called. But that was, uh, so we made this money bomb, we called it. Everyone sent in on one day, he raised $4.3 million without going to one event. And then uh, on the anniversary, anniversary of when uh, the, uh, the settlers in the States, under the British rule, did the tea, the, they, they broke the tea open, acted like Indians, he uh, uh, raised $6 million in one day. So all the politicians ran to say, how'd you do this? How do I do it? But he didn't understand. They didn't understand that it was the message that did it. Not, not the, he preached, Ron Paul preached about competing currencies. Ron Paul preached about many things. Many of the early Bitcoin adopters, many uh, blockchain.info, Nick Casey, uh, uh, Factum, John Johnson, uh, many of us are actual former Ron Paul staffers that open the biggest Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency companies because he opened our eyes. But then time, every time, right before we, uh, we would run, we were winning in Iowa. And they destroyed us in the media. The media all day would just destroy anything that we built. We were winning and, they, and then we lost. They would keep attacking, 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 fake attacks. Attack anything. Just to, and they would look at the polling numbers. And they'd make sure that we would lose on election day. So again, we lost. Over and over, all the candidates that I supported lost. 20 years went by. I said to myself, you know, did I throw my life away? Trying to express and teach to people the perils of fake money, paper money that doesn't mean anything, that they can fund wars with and do whatever they want and control you, that you have to collect all year round and give it back to them even though they create it out of thin air? Do I have to do that? Am I a monkey, a trained monkey? Am I not created in the image of God? I thought I lost every, I, I destroyed my whole life. I had no family. I worked day and night. No family. I, all my loved ones left me. No one would talk to me. I was, I was enraged. Like I almost got last, yesterday. But I didn't do it. I'm learning. I'm learning. And then, I thought, it was, I, thought I, I, I really, I said, they, I, they, I can't win. There's no way to win against these powers, against my owners. I can't win because we can raise all this money, but they just talk on the TV all day for free and destroy us. We can raise hundreds of millions of dollars, and in two days, they spent billions of dollars just talking against us. They are the political cartel, are the mainstream media. They own you too. So at our events, we had a, something called, someone had a table, a Bitcoin. Here's the white paper. He was handing out a white paper. Like, what the heck is that? Because there were others. We had Dr. Va Van Nadas made a Liberty Dollar. Uh, we had many attempts at making a, another currency from the late 90s. But always there was a centralized, three-dimensional place that the F FBI can come and destroy everything in five minutes. And they did. They took his... $18 million of gold that he had certificates for, and they just gave it back to him 10 years later, 11 years later. And they didn't do it, they couldn't do anything to him because they didn't do anything illegal. And then I read the, the white paper, and I said, what the heck? I go, because I had the pre presupposition that it couldn't work. But then I realized that through de decentralization, 
There could be something that doesn't exist in the three-dimensional world. They control the three-dimensional world. They can come handcuff you in the three-dimensional world. They can take your gold and throw it in the garbage in the three-dimensional world or give it to their friends. But Bitcoin is not in the three-dimensional world. And I found that Bitcoin, that little Bitcoin, and I said, finally, I have a weapon. I have a weapon against my owners. I will not be a slave. I said, finally, I might be able, before I die in this cage, I might be able to run free in the wild. Finally, I could be free. I have a tool, I have a weapon that they cannot destroy on election day. You talk about bubbles? You know how many bubbles I've seen? 20 bubbles. I've seen it go from $30 to 50 cents. And I laugh. They can't stop it. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, sure, I'll take a water. Oh, I got one right here. No bubbles, please. So, I found Bitcoin. We were trading, not even really for money at first. We're trading. I traded a domain name for, if I told you, forget it. I'm not even going to say it because they're going be, to have like a domain name day, like the pizza day. The guy sent 10,000 Bitcoin for a pizza, two pizzas. So, I said to myself, so we're trading. And we're, at a, uh, we're in the parks, we're in the alleys, we're meeting up all over the place. And then I was at, we're at a Whole Foods and some, the guy was dragging the garbage. And the garbage spilled. I was like, oh my God, what are we doing here? And there's like 50 people. I said, you know what? And then I see here on the news, the same characters that were talking bad about the candidates. The only the honest candidates are the same people who are talking bad about Bitcoin. The same ones. I said, I have to do something. I destroyed, remember, I'm done. I destroyed all the furniture in my office. I destroyed it. I was a big shot in the real estate market in Manhattan. I had a lot to lose. I didn't want to be with those people, the presumptuous people. I hung out with all of the best of them. All of them, wasps, whatever. And I said, I have to do something. And uh, it all goes back. I go, well, I have to go and do something. And I, and I have to tell you, I got this, my father, the only reason why I would do things that were so crazy sometimes is because my father made sure I didn't have any fear. And if I did have fear, I have to go chase the fear and destroy the fear right away. That's what my father made me. My father was an auto mechanic. He was, he was an indentured servant in Greece, orphan. And he told me many incredible things. I am so blessed. He brought me my first bicycle. It was made with different parts he found. And he built the bicycle and put train, was 20 training wheels on it. Rusty bicycle. And we were in a store in New York City at that time, in a story, a Greek neighborhood. And he gave me the bicycle. I was very happy I rode the bicycle with the training wheels. There were other rich kids. They had other brand new bicycles with uh, training wheels also, and they're riding them around. But theirs were fancy bicycles. I couldn't see the difference, but they were laughing at me, and they pointed out to me and said, yours is a crappy bicycle. And after enough people said it to me, I put the bicycle away in the hallway. And then my father, I never saw him. I only saw, he came, he got, uh, he went to work five in the morning and came home 11 at night. And uh, we only saw him on Sunday when he woke up around one, two o'clock. And he said, hey, why don't you ride the bicycle? And I didn't know what to say. I said, you know what? I don't like the training wheels. I never learned to ride without the training wheels. I said, I don't like the training wheels. He goes, oh, good. So he went downstairs. He took them off with his hands. And outside, I saw the kids with the, with the nice bicycles. 
And they're riding, and uh, they're laughing. With, they had little pom-poms hanging. I said, listen, I don't want to go outside. He said, why? I go me catapiezune. And that means they're oppressing me. In Greek, that is a very incredible language. You can all learn Greek. Uh, it's a very incredible language. And it says, oh, they're oppressing me. He goes, oh. He goes, they're oppressing you? You must be pretty oppressible. He said to me. So, Bitcoin might have been, in the eyes of many people, pretty oppressible. People were hiding the fact that they were Bitcoiners. Because there was so much bad news, because the reporters didn't know what the hell it was. So they wrote only bad stories. And the other reporters and the other people knew what it was, and they wanted to destroy it early. They wanted to kill the little lizard, became, became, became a Godzilla, and ate the whole planet. All their financial uh, institutions will eat their whole financial institutions. So he said, in the milluni out there, there's millions of them out there. If you listen to what they're thinking, you'll never be able to do anything. There's millions of them. Forget about those people. He said, today we're going to learn the bicycle. There are going to be things in your life that you have to overcome at all times, each and every one of you. Today we're going to learn the bicycle, he said. And after you learn the bicycle, you're going to feel incredible that you conquered one more thing. I said, okay, 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 Dad. Okay, I'm going to do it. Walking me outside. <laughs> Said that already. You will always have strength while doing good. If you know 100%, you will always have the strength to finish what you start. I said, what if someone's in my way when I'm riding this bicycle? Well, no. Uh, he said, always look where you want to go. Never look back. He always said, they said, the window in the car is this big. He's a mechanic. The window in the car is this big. He's a mechanic because he took a toolbox from the Nazis' tank, and he was the only one with tools. That's why he became a mechanic. Always, the window in the car is this big, and the mirror is this big. That's because you got to always look where you want to go. After you see where you're going, where you want to be, then you'll be there. I said, what if there are people in my way? What am I going to do? He said, oh, even, he says to me, even the whole world is going to step to the side. After you know where you're going. The whole world is going to move out of the way. After you know where you're going. I was like, wow. <laughs> Even you. The whole world. After each and every one of you guys. Realize that the permissionless. Open. Decentralized blockchain. Is the only one. That's here to free us. From our owners. There are companies out there that are going to be that know and saw the future that they would be nothing, they would be lost in obscurity if they didn't steal the name blockchain, blockchain this, blockchain that, private databases. The uh, the CEO can throw in the garbage, and then is, is it immutable or not? I said, Dad, what if I fall? What if I fall? What if I fail? What if I fall? He says, everybody falls. If you don't fall, you can't climb, know how to climb back up. You're going to fall a thousand times in a day. A hundred thousand times. You're going to fall a million times. And after you get back up, you are that much stronger. Should I quote Jesus? <laughs> So, there's some writings, and they found, it was a quote from Jesus. He said, the lion, cursed is the man who the lion eats. The prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. 
I got tenfold. The lion, the uh, cursed is the man who the lion eats, for the lion will become man. He said, well, if the fear overcomes you, you'll be cursed by all the fears that overcome you. You'll be the sum of all the fears that overcome you. If they conquer you, you will be conquered person. You will be nothing. And then he said, blessed is the man who eats the lion. For the same thing, the lion will become man. Blessed are you who overcome your fear. For you will be the sum of all the fear you've overcome. You'll be that much stronger. You will be unstoppable. He said, I'll hold the seat and I'm going to run behind you. And you're going to hear me running, but I'm going to run so fast that you're not going to hear me anymore, but I'm still going to be holding that seat. Father passed away. But he's still holding the seat. I said, Dad, I need more time. I need more time. No, you're not going to learn. I gotta learn some time. He said, there's no more time. Everyone gets the same amount of time. You get the same amount of time as Leonardo da Vinci. You get the same amount of time as a bum in the Bowery. You get the same amount of time. He says, you have to give more of within you. Within that time, you have to give more of you within that time. Well, you have to give more of you within that time. You have to give more of you per minute to change the world. Each and every one of you. Every moment is a present. The present is every moment that you have to unwrap. Every moment. And use every moment. The gift per minute, yeah? So then he said, Varda tu Leonida, Varda Macedonia, que el Nicolás se rixi voli, que otan tisi que petisi, oli tin giza, tin ragisi. He said, Step to the side, armies of Leonidas, that's the Spartan, and step to the other side, armies of Alexander, Alexander the Great, and little Nick is going to throw his hammer, and as he throws his hammer, and the hammer is Bitcoin. As he throws his hammer, the hammer goes further. Every time, yeah, maybe it comes back a little, you know. It goes to 1,054, it comes back to 178. It went to 30 bucks, it went down to 50 bucks. It, now it went to, to almost $20,000. Oh, wow, that's 34, you know, Bitcoin is dead. Little Nick is, throws his hammer. Not just little Nick, Bitcoin is the hammer that we're all throwing, all of us. And we're throwing the hammer, and as it gets... More accurate and further, one day, he said, you will crack the earth in half. That's what he said to me. To make me strong. So I'm trying to figure out, am I going to open this place? I'm going to, oh, I'm going downtown. I'm going to find a place. I found a big, giant place right next door to New York Stock Exchange, right next door, on the ground floor. More money than I can ever justify or even find right next to the New York Stock Exchange. I'm going to open my own exchange. Permissionless, of course, because I don't know anything. I don't have any licenses. I don't know anything. SEC, FBI, whatever. Department of State, Department of Financial Services. I know them now. I open up. I find the biggest space. And I'm about to go sign a lease. And uh, I was so, I was down at uh, ground zero. I got all kinds of diseases. I don't know what the hell they are. I'm done. What kind of diseases do I have? What else? Whatever, I don't know. I got a lot of stuff. I don't want to know what it is. It's not mine. They cut my eyes open. I was almost blind when I was going to go sign that Leah. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I was like, you know, Nick, 
what the hell are you doing? I said, well, I know that I have to bring it in front of everyone's face, this Bitcoin, this blockchain. I have to bring it in front of everybody and accelerate it. So I said, Dad, send me a sign. Send me a sign, and I'll do it. My dad passed away five years or a few years earlier. I said, send me a sign, and I'm going to do it. So I'm walking. It was really windy that day. And I went into a, a thing, into a doorway. It was so windy. And I saw there was a deck of cards on a doorknob. And I said, is that the sign? There was balance on the doorknob. I go, is that the... I go, nah. And I leaned it against the door. And I went out and walking down the street. One block, two blocks in the wind, and I saw a bicycle store. I said, is that the sign? I go, nah, no way. That thing's been there for 20 years. <laughs> huh? Two minutes? Wow. It's okay. So then I said, oh, my God. I ran back, and the cards was a red bicycle brand playing cards. I said, that's the sign. I got to go to it. And I remember he said, Tirio den Ginese, and Tirio den Trost. A beast you will never become unless you eat beasts. Unless you eat beasts, a beast you will never become. The legacy financial system is a beast. The centralized governments are beasts. Against men, not all of them, you know, some of them are nice beasts, cuddly ones. Are you worried? They're going to get me. I got my passport in my pocket. And I got a private plane all gassed up. We leave you guys behind, but we bail you out. Don't worry. Well, you have to have permissionless blockchain. You can have private blockchains, but you have to put the proof on the permissionless blockchain. That's the reality. So we opened up the, the center. We taught the reporters, 100 feet from the stock exchange. Everything. There's a movie if you want to watch the movie. I don't make any money off of it. Banking on Bitcoin, on Netflix, the only Bitcoin movie. That's right in front of the stock exchange. We sold people Bitcoin in the street. That lady didn't want to buy it at a dollar. We build ATM machines. Uh, we build transparent voting machines. I'm not against governments. I build voting machines. There's blockchain voting machines. That's me doing some kung fu. I don't know why they put that there. That's me in Venezuela. I don't know. I went to help some kids, and I don't know what happened over there. They almost kidnapped us. That was at the World Government Forum, which I said the same stuff. These are, this is like a bunch of times they said that Bitcoin died. I'm clicking through for the two minutes. Oh, I have a project called zap.org. It tri triggers financial events on the, uh, in smart contracts from information from the three-dimensional world, which I think is going to be the next step. I'm always early. I built uh, all that other stuff, and right now I believe that uh, full transparency is going to come from decentralized oracles. Oracles are devices, uh, uh, daemons that take data and trigger financial uh, events on uh, smart contracts. I believe that's the future because then, but right now, these blockchains are all isolated somewhere. What do you mean, not Bitcoin? Bitcoin is, it happens to be the strongest blockchain. Uh, if you don't have uh, the crypto asset, to support the network, to, to create the game theory uh, dynamics. Uh, you're not really going to have data that's uh, motivated to be true or not in a decentralized fashion. That's why there is a cryptocurrency. But the largest blockchain in the world is a Bitcoin blockchain. You have the second one is the Ethereum blockchain. And uh, these decentralized blockchains are the ones that, uh, that, are, that are honest. You can have data in your own... Uh, servers, AWS, whatever, but you have to put hashes, you have to run them through an algorithm and put the proof, little tiny proofs on these big blockchains so no one later can just delete the folders there and, or try to uh, sell you fake data or destroy your whole thing. So 
I believe uh, it's an incredible future. We can help hundreds of millions, if not billions of people. The four, three, four billion people that don't have a bank account, you can drop a cell phone in the middle of uh, a village in Africa and they can uh, create an economy for the whole village. And uh, I want, I'm inviting everybody into this time. You owe it. You owe it to your children. You owe it to your ancestors. This is the only time ever that we have an opportunity to give more freedom to the individual. It doesn't have to be 100% freedom. More freedoms. I was just talking about me. I'm nuts. So we have to be able to, to spread this freedom, financial freedom, monetary freedom, to the individuals of the world and help the world. And you'll no, never grow weary while doing good, ever. And that's about it. Sorry.